So Abraham prays for Sodom and Gomorrah. Ultimately, it's not effective. He, uh, he realizes that um, there's no one righteous in the city, and so he might as well uh, stop asking. One of the things that always bugged me about this text um, was Abraham stops at 10. Does that bug anybody else? If you're a negotiator, you know um, that if you see weakness, you push until there's no more weakness, right? So if someone's selling their car worth $20,000 and they say, I'd love to sell you my car for $15,000. And you say, well, how about $14,000? And they say, okay, I'd, nothing would thrill me more than to give it to you for $14,000. Then you would say, how about $10,000? And you would keep on going until you say, how about you pay me to take that car off your hands? And you just keep pushing. But Abraham doesn't do that. He, he gets to 10 and he stops. And I'm thinking, you know, why Abraham? Because he knew there was no one righteous. So the book of Genesis is surfacing for us a problem that on the earth there is no one righteous. And so that problem is answered only in the New Testament. As you look over the earth and you can't find anyone righteous, well, how will men and women be saved? Because there is one righteous who would come from heaven and be sent to earth, who would live a sinless, perfect life. That one righteous is the Lord Jesus Christ. So the, so the Old Testament is surfacing something that the New Testament answers. And the New Testament also says after Jesus goes up, he sends us out. Just as he was sent into the world, so also Jesus sends us into the world. And even though we may not be righteous, we, we're standing in the gap and interceding for other people who are not righteous. Not because we're righteous will God hear their prayers, but because Jesus is righteous for us.